Inspired by classic platformer enemies, I've made a kamikaze pig. It bumps into walls and explodes itself when it sees the player. Join me in this video and learn step by step how you can also bring your enemies to life using the bumping enemy recipe from the Platform Essentials cookbook. Depending on the audience you've set for your game, you may want to use some specific elements to improve the gameplay experience. This can be based on players' desires and the game genre. In this game, I want to add some adventure elements. One of them is a story that unfolds as the player explores the game world. So, in this background story, the King Pig is facing a revolution in his kingdom, led by the Human King. When we have this kind of story, we need antagonism to provide a driving force against the player's goal. In that sense, simple hazards aren't enough. As I explained in the previous video, they are mechanical and, in a sense, they are perceived as simple objects without desires or ambitions. To fix that, we personify hazards, giving them a human-like aspect. With that, we turn them into subjects that have their own goals and desires. So, inspired by classical enemies such as Super Mario Goombas, Mega Man Spikey and Kirby's Wheelie, I've mixed the hazard and the basic moving character to create the bumping enemy recipe. I call it like that because its core feature is that it wanders around and if it bumps into a wall it changes its direction. There is also a spiced version that uses recast to detect cliff edges, and when it detects so, it changes its direction, but we won't need it at the moment. First of all, I'm going to import the recipe from the Platformer Essentials Asset Pack. This is fairly trivial with the Godot Engine Asset Library Import feature. After importing, I create an inherited scene based on the bumping enemy to this scene, and from there, I customize it to fit my specific project. The Kamikaze Pig design is very simple. On top of running around bumping on walls, I also want it to light up the bomb that it holds when it detects that the player is close enough. To detect the player, I use the Vision Area 2D from the Hazard Recipe. To create an actual bomb, the one that we've created in the previous video, I used the Spawner 2D recipe from my first book, but I had to tweak it a bit. The Spawner 2D, by default, creates nodes as its children, but this leads to a small problem in this design. After placing the bomb, the Kamikaze Pig waits for the bomb to explode, so it dies in the process. The problem with that is that when the Kamikaze Pig dies, it removes itself from the scene tree. So the bomb that we just spawned will also disappear and will not hit the player. To fix that, I've created a bombs node on the level scene. I use it to hold all the bombs that I create in the game, both manually or dynamically. Of course, there were other workarounds for that. I could disable all the Kimikaze big behaviors into the bomb explodes and only then call the kill free method. But this will make so that every mechanic that spawns a bomb in the game will need an ad hoc workaround to the same problem. So, this approach at least ensures that all mechanics that create a bomb will have the same outcome. I honestly think that the animation system is Godot core feature. Let me know your opinion. Leave a comment below with your favorite Godot feature. I'm curious to know what you enjoyed the most in this lovely engine. Anyway, with everything in place, I can choreograph this behavior using call method tracks to spawn the bomb at the right moment. And then, I can just extend the bumping enemy script to add the kamikaze pig specific behaviors. So, to trigger the bomb placement behavior, I can connect the vision area to the area entered signal to the script, and then I can play the bomb drop animation. In the very animation itself, I can prevent the kamikaze pig from triggering other behaviors, so everything works just fine. You can see that making a game is easier when you have the right recipes. The Platform Essentials Cookbook just entered in Early Access. This project source code is also available as a sample project that showcases how to use each recipe. 
Are you ready to make some games? Click the link in the description and grab your copy of the cookbook. In the next video, we are going to play a bit with player interactions. In an adventure game, we want to engage players in the story that we are telling. So we can tell this story through NPCs, artifacts, warring sites and other items that we can drop on the ground so the players can find them. So subscribe to the channel right now and turn on the bell so you don't miss when the next video comes out. That's it, thank you so much for watching, keep developing and until the next time.